Hey, everyone out there in CMMC land. Welcome to another edition of Prevail's Compliance Corner. I am Orly. And I'm Noelle. And you are about to spend another 15 minutes, hopefully learning something about CMMC, maybe getting a laugh or two if we manage to like uh, actually be funny <laughs> and then just thinking we're funny. Um, and hopefully you don't leave this, um, this edition list thinking, wow, I just wasted 15 minutes of my life that I'm never getting back. Um, in any case, uh, we have another interesting show uh, ready for you today. Uh, what are we talking about, Noelle? We are talking about the CAP, the CMMC assessment process. So it's a document that came out at the very, very end of, of July of 2022, and it has been a big deal. People are very excited about it. Yeah, and we had um, Stacy High Brinkley uh, on the show a couple of weeks ago. She was great, um, and she gave us her knowledge. This was pre-release. Um, and she told us, you know, at a high level, what the CMMC assessment process, the CAP is about, um, you know, that anyone who's looking to be assessed should uh, take kind of these high level steps, uh, making sure that there's um, CUI is isolated, make sure that they're uh, working to close their POAMs, that they're constantly working to improve their cybersecurity. And those were great points. Now that uh, the document has been released, we have a couple more things that we can add to that conversation. And I'm sure we're going to probably have a couple of uh, episodes. I'm just crystal balling it here, I think, on this topic, because there's a lot to say. And as the document gets updated and more content is available, um, I'm sure there'll be further conversations. But, uh, you know, reason we wanted to talk about it today is because we put out a great blog this week. We'll have a link to that blog in the show notes, kind of giving people an overview of what the cap is and uh, what we know about it today. You know, that might be di a different uh, set of assumptions a week from now. Um, but to kind of kick it off, you know, why don't we just revisit and make sure people know, Noel, what the cap is. And why don't, why don't you uh, lead us off with that? So the thing that, that like the big question is, okay, well, we have an assessor's guide that's been out for, for quite some time now. You know, what's different about the cap? You know, what it, where is that differentiation? So the cap is that overarching procedural guidance. So the assessor's guide is, hey, this is what you're going to do. And here's some ideas of, how, you know, things that you can individually assess per control. The cap is the overarching, how do you manage a CMMC audit? You know, how is it managed? What things do you have to look at? Um, you know, just that sort of thing, if that makes sense. So in a in a nutshell, the CAP is the guide that tells C3PAOs how to assess potential uh, defense contractors who want to achieve CMMC level two compliance. That's yeah. that, that's a bumper yeah. Exactly. That is the bumper sinker level. It it breaks it. I mean, you can read the document. It's it's quite a few pages. It breaks it down like the phases of the the individual phases of what you can you can expect an assessment to be like. One of the things that's really nice about that is it it gives those members of the DIB who are looking to do maybe voluntary assessments. We were we've all been waiting on this document to come out in order to have that happen. And now that we're at that point where voluntary assessments can happen, this gives the guidance to also the members of the DIB so they kind of have a better idea of what to expect as well in these these different assessments. Yeah. So let's make a couple. You raised a, um, an interesting point here, which makes it clear that we need to just put out a couple of things um, out there for people to know, which is one, this cap that we're talking about, it is in draft form, which yes. means that it will change. People are delivering comments. Some people have said it's in a confusing document and has a lot of contradic internal contradictions. I would say what well, doesn't, but it, the point is that it's an important document that um, is a living document now and it is in the process of being updated. And for now, it's uh, one of its key uses is as a reference document. Um, I think you also raise an important point um, that who of who will be doing the assessments according to what we know now. It is the C3PAOs who will be doing the assessments of the defense contractors. But until then, we know that we have um, opened the gate for what is another very important thing, and that's voluntary assessments. So while you well, I shut up and you can fill in the blank. <laughs> so, but, but no, you're absolutely right. Voluntary is so voluntary assessment is what everybody's been waiting on. So this document had to come out first to sort of have those guidelines be very clear so that everybody was on the same page. And now that that's happened, these C3PAOs who've been waiting, you know, chomping at the bit to go ahead and do these assessments for vo the voluntary assessments can do that. However, 
the thing that is interesting that we have this conversation, you know, uh, what was it last week with one of our other C3PAO friends over at Schulman, Marcy, and one of the things she mentioned is that this is actually the, those voluntary assessments are happening with the C3PAO, but they're also happening being shadowed by members of the DIPCAC. And we don't have a whole lot of detail yet because those voluntary assessments are just now starting. So we're not 100% sure on how that sort of breakdown is going to be. Is it going to be like a 75% C3PO, 25% DIBCAC, 50-50? We don't know. Uh, what we do know, though, for certain is that the DIBCAC will be shadowing these, these original right. voluntary assessments. And the reason for that is because CMMC right now is not technically in place. Because right. we're waiting for the interim rule to come out in March, you know, hopefully of this coming year of 2023, and then it won't actually be officially in place until the 60 day comment period. So we're talking, you know, May of next year, most likely at the earliest. Well, the DIVCAC obviously, and, and the DOD in, in general wanted to make sure that there could be these voluntary assessments, hence why they pushed the cap out to make sure that they could do these assessments. Now, the assessments that they will be doing are considered what's known as a DIBCAC high assessment. Right. Which um, yep. A DIBCAC high assessment is based against NIST 800-171 and the, doc, the supplement document, which is the 800-171A, which is sort of the like the assessor's guide for CMMC, but the NIST 800-171 version that is what they're actually going to be assessing. And so that makes things a little bit more interesting because again, we we haven't seen the DIBCAC do a DIBCAC high assessment with members of you know the CMMC ecosystem. So it's gonna be very interesting to see how that all plays out. But what we have been told and what we do know at this point, you know, as much as we can know anything right now is that they are going to reference the cap and the cap will probably be involved, but to the degree in these voluntary assessments, we're not sure yet again, because None of them have happened. starting. Exactly. Yeah. Just starting. So to, to summarize, right, while the cap has come out in draft form, you know, it's opened the door for voluntary assessments. Voluntary assessments will be done by uh, C3PAOs and DIBCAC. They will be done against the NIST standard because CMMC is not fully um, ratified yet. And, um, you know, I, I guess the thing to know is that those things are kind of in process and they will, you know, the, the, the ecosystem is still being baked. Yes, um, definitely. But it's really key that these uh, voluntary assessments have begun because that that is uh, something that, you know, C3PAOs have been waiting for. So long. And another thing to mention too, is that the incentive program and this, the incentive program has not, to my knowledge, been completely codified yet, but there's no one, no one believes that it won't be really at this point. Everybody's pretty sure that it's going to be the standard that if you do a voluntary assessment, these DIBCAC high assessments that you're getting done with, you know, in conjunction with the C3PAO, that those assessments will be grandfathered into that CMMC level two, you know, or whatever level you end up doing. So for example, if I got my assessment, my voluntary assessment done today, and I got it finished today, then my my clock normally would start for the three year reassessment, you know, today. So like in three years from today, I would have to get a reassessment. Right. That's not going to be the case for me though, because what that's going to happen instead is that May, whatever happens to be of 2023, when there is an official CMMC ruling, the idea being that what I did in August will grandfather me in and my clock actually starts when that rule comes out and not today. So it means you kind of get like an extra amount of time that you, you know, you don't have to worry about reassessing as soon, which is nice. Yeah. Um, and so that's definitely a good incentive for a lot of people to get started. And from what I understand from speaking to those uh, C3PAOs that we have, you know, they, they have a long list of people who are jumping on. There is definitely. no shortage yeah. of work there. Absolutely true. Yeah. I think the other thing, and this is point two of our conversation that I want to make sure we get in, is um, you know what is going to be assessed. We know it's going to be NIST 800-171, yep. but uh, it's also DFARS uh, C through G, so 7012's um, C through G, and uh, FedRAMP. Um, now, that's a little bit interesting because it, it we've heard, we heard uh, back on our DOD webinar that there would not be an assessment uh, uh, of DFARS, right? Um, but it seems like the that's that has uh, evolved, and now it seems like there is. So why don't you just talk a little bit about what this what this uh, all means? I it's not super surprising. So this is this is finally sort of the answer to the question that we've all had for a while now. 
I can't tell you how many times I've had conversations with customers and potential customers who are like, well, okay, great. You know, I I'm going to do CMMC and then I don't have to worry about 7012, right? DFAR 7012, right? Well, no, you, well, technically speaking, CMMC in its current iteration does not require the DFAR 7012 clause to be, to, to be met. Um, however, with the cap coming out and including that 7012 information, like the C through G, you know, image capturing, like you were referencing, you know, CSPs and cloud service providers of whatever type, you know, having FedRAT moderate equivalency and all the, the other different points that 7012, you know, brings up. We're now seeing that that is in the cap, which does lead us to believe what something that we've all kind of been suspicious of for a while is that when interim ruling comes out, it's most likely going to include a lot of those 7012 items in it. And now seeing the cap, that sort of seems like a movement in that direction that the 7012 guidance is going to be part of the CMMC uh, ecosystem, if you will, which is good because there have been so many times we talked about it on this program, right? I mean, we talked about it so many times where it's very confusing. You cannot, for the most part, get a, a contract in the DOD that doesn't have a 7012 clause. I mean, sometimes you can, but for the most part, it's very difficult. If you have a 7012 clause in a contract, and your, let's say your CMMC, you know, you get your CMMC level two and everything is great, but you're not doing, let's say C through G, then you're out of compliance with your contract. So it's great that you're compliant with CMMC, but your contract is now going to suffer. So it's, yeah, it's been very confusing up until now. So I'm really glad that they're finally putting that more in writing so people can see that those things are going to be integrated together. At least that's what it looks like so far. Yeah. I think one thing we should say is that C through G, you know, just giving people, um, a, a just a short explanation of what that means. C through G is kind of the reporting responsibilities that a defense contractor has in the case of a cyber incident. Um, and so those are key for the DOD, uh, key for contractors, um, and key for um, you know, becoming compliant. Um, so the other part of that is um, something that's near and dear to us, which is uh, cloud service providers, right? And FedRAMP moderate uh, equivalent. Right. So, um, how is that's another thing that uh, the the cap looks at? Uh, what is what does the cap say when it comes to FedRAMP? So it's actually just echoing what's already in DFAR seventy twelve, which is that you know if you are using if you're using any sort of cloud service provider, there has to be a FedRAMP moderate equivalency, and it's also taking a little bit of a step further and asking for a body of evidence, which is something that we already were familiar with that that was going to likely be asked for, but. It finally states that very clearly in this process. So it, it definitely does say also very clearly um, that the C3PAO slash DIBCAC or whoever's doing the audit is not going to be doing like a mini FedRAMP assessment of, of the C3, like the CSP. That's not going to happen. They've already, they actually state that in the cap, which I'm glad for because that can be something that can get very confusing very quickly. So what they did say is that there has to be an assessment that's been done that can sort of be authenticated and say, yes, you know, these are these people who did your assessment are people who are, you know, certified three PAOs, you know, three PAOs, which is a third party assessor organization, not to be confused with the C3PA <laughs> because, you know, why oh, not? Okay. Yeah. We're going to add some more acronyms. Why not? So on the FedRAMP side, a th third party assessor organization, often called a three PAO, is comes in and does an assessment of your organization and can let you know, you know, where you fall on, you know, out of the 300 plus controls, you know, where you fall on everything, and then gives you a letter of attestation at the end of it. And that's something that you can then, you know, as the cloud service provider give to your customers so that they can then answer some of those C through G's, um, like, excuse me, some of those C through G's and also in this case, the FedRAMP part of uh, D4-7012. So once you get that letter of attestation, and then you also have a body of evidence. So that's, you know, something that the auditors will believe is enough information, like a report from your, basically there's a report that comes with your letter of attestation. If you take that report, maybe your SSP is also with that and you give that to the auditors or the C3PAO and they can say, okay, great, that sounds good. And then they move on. Now, if you can't get that from your cloud service provider, if you can't get something that states, you know, yes, I'm going to tell you that I will absolutely support C through G. Yes, we have a letter of attestation from a third party organization who has done our FedRAT moderate equivalency. Yes, I have a body of evidence that I can give you to give to your auditors or, you know, I can get on the phone and explain it to them or whatever we need. If you can't get that from your cloud service provider, this is now the first time that we're seeing that that can directly affect your CMMC auditing and assessment. 
That's this is the first time we've seen that written down. I mean, it's all something we've all been kind of suspicious of, but now it's actually it looks relatively official. Again, pre-decisional still. This is still a draft document. It's still in flight, but it it really does sort of close that gap that I think a lot of people sort of had. Well, you know, what am I supposed to do between these two different things, CMMC and seventy twelve? Got it. I mean, so this is, um, you know, kind of given us a bit of an understanding of what this cap document is about. I, I, I would say for anyone in the audience who's kind of uh, sitting on the sides and looking at this kind of uh, this whole play kind of unfolding, I think one of the key things that I would take away is that if you were um, off on recess for the past couple of months, um, you know, recess has ended, class is back in session. Um, and it, it is time to, if you have not, start taking this whole assessment process seriously. Oh yeah. I mean, how would you define the, the takeaways here? I, I think you I think you hit the nail on the head. It is it is a hundred percent. I mean, we we've said it a million times, but this is you know, it just the, the closer we get to that March slash July, you know, or excuse me, March slash May 2023 deadline when that interim rule comes out. The more time that passes, if you have not started uh, to build your CMMC program internally, you know, that that is you need you need to have started months ago. So get on it now, get on it as quickly as you can. And for those people who have maybe a higher level of maturity, you know, start thinking internally from a business process perspective. OK, well, does it make sense for us to go ahead and do a voluntary assessment now? It might. And if it does, this is the time to have a conversation with the C3PAO. Uh, like you pointed out earlier, and I know that I've talked to a few of our partners and you have as well, all we're hearing is we are booked, we are booked, we are booked. So if you have not reached out to a C3PAO, you should probably get on that. Even if you're thinking, hey, you know what? I'm not going to do an assessment until like February. Get on the phone and have a conversation because th- we have quite a few partners ourselves who are very, very booked. You right. Know? So it's, it's definitely, you want to make sure to do that. And Certainly, you know, we have, we're lucky enough to have an ecosystem that's really fantastic here within Prevail. And we've built up so many partnerships with different C3PAOs to get that information, which is really great. And it's great because we can also, you know, give that over to our customers and help them sort of wade through all the things. <laughs> right. Right. All right, Noel. Um, this is a conversation that is ongoing. We're going to maybe break for now just because, you know, we were running out of time, but um always good to talk to you um, and get your thoughts on things that are going on in the ecosystem. And so to our audience, thank you for joining us and look forward to talking to you again soon. Bye-bye. Bye.